I mean, this is basically America looking at any authoritarian dictator and saying, fuck you, we can wreck our own democracy, baby. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> USA, USA. <laughs> I mean, guys, who needs Russians when you got the Democrats, right? We're gonna. <laughs> no, so much. No. Welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Uh, just a quick note before we di dive into this episode. This was recorded in front of a live virtual audience via Zoom. And if you want to be part of the virtual live stand-up comedy shows, you totally can. Uh, tickets are available for these shows right now. They are in the description below. They're happening on Friday nights. They're happening Friday nights. Uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. They're $5 tickets, and each week uh, is new material, so you can get multiple different uh, tickets for multiple different shows. And not only that, but we also help a grassroots organization or a grassroots venue, activist or journalist, uh, because uh, we all got to take care of each other. So uh, each week is a different uh, grassroots organization for this show the show that you're about to watch we donated half of our ticket sales to a movement for a people's party uh, who are actively working to organize to essentially make a a movement for a people's party you create a party that is more representative of the people than corporations and uh, they're they're awesome uh, I've had Nick Branna, one of the founders on the show, on my uh, interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk, several different times. He's fantastic. Uh, so uh, if you want to donate to them, if you want to learn more about them, uh, peoplesparty.org. You can find the link in the description below. If you want to attend them, like I said, there's tickets uh, to these live virtual stand-up comedy shows. But if you want a free ticket, you can become a sustaining member. You can become a sustaining member right at krishmohan.com. It's K-R-I-S-H. M-O-H-A-N dot com. You can become a sustaining member directly on my website through Patreon or via Bandcamp. Through this, you get free tickets to these live virtual stand-up comedy shows. You, you get uh, uh, un unreleased exclusive stand-up comedy and storytelling material. You get uh, bonus merch. Uh, and you get early access to larger full episodes of Fork Full of Noodles like this one that you're watching right now. Uh, so go to krishmohan.com, check out those future dates, and I hope to see you at a show. And now, without any further ado, let's... So, as an immigrant that finally has the right to vote bestowed onto him by a White House built by slaves, I gotta say... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm, I'm not very ex excited to exercise this vote, right? Especially based on the awful candidate choices from the duopoly. But... The process of voting in America might be more atrocious than the candidates we are told to vote for. <laughs> <laughs> the voting process in America is so bad that when asked to describe this process, international election observers just showed a photo of a garbage can on fire. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah. But there's a... There's a ton of ways that the American election system is fucked up. But in terms of the voters, a fair and balanced amount of fuckery happens right at the polls, particularly in the Democratic primaries. The voting system, the voting machines themselves are hijacked by corporate interests that work with the Democratic National Committee, right? The DNC, uh, which is a private corporation that owns elections. So that basically means that we've privatized elections and turned it into a product, right? Get your votes here, get your votes. Come on down. $5 gets you two Biden votes. $27 <laughs> gets you a Bernie. <laughs> Come on down. 27 gets you a Bernie, but $5 gets you two Bidens. It's a Biden fire sale, folks. <laughs> <laughs> State of American elections. <clears throat> 
look at a lot of in a lot of states the voting machines are owned by corporations which have proprietary codes that only they can look at in these states the voter goes in casts their choice and then gets a printout of their choices with a barcode or a qr code and then the only people who can access that qr code is the corporation that owns the voting machine so there's no way for us to verify whether those votes got recorded the right way or not right mm -hmm. so here is uh here's someone that 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 deals with this on a regular basis talking about that so this is uh dr laura chamberlain talking to hard lens media this is a proprietary QR code that's owned by Dominion Voting System, the same electronic voting machine company that uh, programs their uh, electronic voting machines in Serbia. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Okay. They have Serbia, Serbian um, programmers that put the code in. <laughs> These machines, you go up and you vote on them. It's like a big tablet, like your iPhone, but only bigger. You vote on them. It prints out a piece of paper. See, they got it that we've been saying paper ballot, paper ballot, paper ballot, okay. but they're super slick. So they, it prints up a piece of paper. It's just an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Okay. Gets printed up. Your choices are right there. So it seems like, oh, look, my choices are here. President, you know, Bernie, uh, da, 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 you know, all your choices are printed up, but they also stamp a barcode, a proprietary barcode on that pa piece of paper. And that's what's counted. Not the, your choices printed up, mm -hmm. but this. And okay. this is, there's no way of knowing what's in here. There's no over-the-counter uh, machine How or insidious. smartphone app. Exactly. Okay. The Chicago Board of Elections even told me that they can't check and see what's in this barcode independently of the Dominion machines. Yeah. So basically, you voted for Bernie, but the machine is programmed to turn every third or fourth vote to Biden. And we can confirm a lot of this stuff uh, by exit polls, right? These are polls uh, taken to gather democratic, demographic information and make sure that the machine results uh, match the actual votes. And in most nations, if the exit polls show a 2% discrepancy, then the votes have to be recounted or redone entirely. In this election alone, we saw a lot of states that were showing over 8% discrepancy between Biden and Bernie votes. I mean, this is basically America looking at any authoritarian dictator and saying, fuck you. We can wreck our own democracy, baby. Okay. <laughs> yeah. USA. USA. <laughs> I mean, guys, who needs Russians when you got the Democrats, right? We're gonna <laughs> with our own elections. And check this. This is this is the uh, this is the exit polls from uh, a lot of Super Tuesday states right here. So you can look. Uh, this is from Texas. Uh, you can see that the discrepancy between Bernie and uh, uh, Bernie and Biden was 4.4 percent. Bernie and Bloomberg was 4.9 percent. So total, that's almost nine percent discrepancy between uh, between the exit polls and what was actually recorded by the machine. Massachusetts, right? Uh, Massachusetts was 8.4 percent, not just for Bernie, but also for Elizabeth Warren. So if you're a Warren supporter. Biden kind of fucked over Elizabeth Warren uh, with, with, this, uh, with, these, with these proprietary code machines too, right? It's the same thing. 10.2 for Bloomberg in Michigan, 7.5% uh, discre discrepancy there. So that's, seven, that's a little over 17%. That's, that's, that's so good. That's, that's almost 20% of the votes are, are just screwed, right? <laughs> Uh, here's South Carolina. This was a state that Biden uh, supposedly won in a landslide. 5.1% uh, uh, discrepancy between Biden and Bernie Sanders. That still doesn't mean that Biden would have won, but it doesn't mean it, it basically means that this this huge gap, uh, it, this huge thing that they were saying, oh, Biden, he's he's a, he's the ultimate winner because of South Carolina, is not exactly true because it wouldn't have been that big of a blowout. Uh, here's Missouri. Missouri was a Missouri was 9.6% uh, discrepancy. <laughs> uh, so this is, I mean, this is in in every other election that happens around the world, they would look at these results and say, "We gotta fucking, 
do it over right but <laughs> but in america we're like let's just keep it it's fine we're just gonna go with it so in 2016 this was this, what we just saw was happening in a bunch of different states right states like arizona georgia west virginia south carolina uh and a bunch of other states the exit polls were off anywhere between four and eight percent and even the independent company that ran these exit polls basically said uh, that they released these numbers and then they adjusted them, quote unquote, adjusted them to fit machine results. This isn't just election fraud. This is mismanagement of mathematics, which is a fundamental universal constant. Okay. <laughs> so really what the Democratic Party is doing should be a crime against the universe. That's how bad this is. <laughs> These people shouldn't be allowed anywhere near numerals for the next 500 years. <laughs> and, and when the DNC and their partner corporations are called out for cheating the American people, they responded with that they don't owe any fairness to anybody. They said that in a court of law, that they are allowed to and will continue to cheat in order to win. And these are the Democrats, right? These are the people that we believe are the good guys. Well, the good guys just claimed that they have the right to cheat democracy. They said that in front of, they said all of this in front of a judge. In front of a judge, they said that they are allowed to have an electoral cabal which, let's be honest, kind of sounds like the lamest of all cabals, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the Republicans are, 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 don't have their hands clean of the situation either. They've instated things like gerrymandering and interstate cross-check, cross which uh, interstate cross-check specifically in general elections ensures that voters with the same last name will be kicked off the count. Now, this primarily affects minority voters. Uh, and if they have to sacrifice a couple of Smiths and Joneses along the way, so be it, you guys. So be it. Yeah. Yeah, they will, they will be sacrificial lambs for the Republicans' electoral cabal, which is just as lame as the Democrats. Right? So who says, who says the duopoly can't achieve equality? You know, they just, they're both equally lame and worthless. You know, there it is. <laughs> Boom. There's that equality. <laughs> we were all looking for it. It was right there. <laughs> so, and the Democrats and Republicans are so proud of the way that they manipulate American democracy that they are ready to ship it to all other nations, right? That's, that's what happens when you privatize democracy. You, you start packaging it, you know? Maybe Banana Republic isn't just about selling boring ass shirts to boring ass people, but also boring ass elections to countries that don't fucking need it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but this is the basis for every war we wage across the world, right? America claims to bring democracy by way of the American military, which it's basically the electoral equivalent of Shia LaBeouf yelling, do it. Do it! <laughs> Just do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. This is literally, <laughs> this is literally the equi equivalent of a shotgun wedding between democracy and countries that aren't sure what this democracy is and why it keeps yelling at them. <laughs> oh, no! So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just do it! <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> that is one of the most encouraging one-minute videos uh, that you'll find anywhere on the internet. It's, it's great. <laughs> Like, if you ever feel down, just look up this video and just have Shia LaBeouf yelling at you for a minute. And you're like, yeah, why am I not doing something? Like, I should do anything <laughs> but this. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's just so oh, impressive. God. It's, it is, he's a very special person. Uh, but anyway. Now, uh, 
one of America's newest targets of uh, our democracy exports is Venezuela, right? And look, Venezuela doesn't need our version of democracy because they have one of the fairest and best rated elections in the world. And, and Jimmy Carter even said that. <laughs> Right, so this is what they do. Um, they use a mix of paper ballots, biometrics, and machine voting to ensure fairness in the election process. America that bringing them democracy would be like the U.S. offering mayo as a spice to India. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 Listen, that shit is offensive, and it will spark World War Three. <laughs> <laughs> People burn so many things to the ground. <laughs> this whole process, by the way, I, I've watched this video a bunch of different times. The only way that you can like steal the election in Venezuela is not only if you hack the machines, but you literally have to run in there and stuff a bunch of votes into that ballot box itself. Like that's the only way you can do it. It's it's a it's a very, very tightly run system over there. Right. Now, as poet laureates. Uh, the Wu-Tang Clan have said, cash rules everything around me. You guys remember the, the beautiful poem that they, they sang? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Look, elections are no different, right? Most politicians are not working on policies to better the lives of their constituents, states, districts, et cetera, et cetera, right? They spend most of their time fundraising. It's roughly between 30 and 70% of the time fundraising. And then the, the rest of the time, uh, what they're doing is that they are uh, reenacting their favorite scenes from NCIS and performative politics. So, very exciting. <laughs> very exciting. Chuck Schumer pretends to be Scott Bakula. It's, it's hilarious, you guys. It's, a, it's, it's very good use of tax dollars, I think. <laughs> Now, here's the thing. The most that you can donate to a candidate is $5,200, right? Which in 2016 came from about 400 families or 57,854 individuals. That's roughly 0.2% of the population that contributed to over half the finances of political campaigns in 2016. Look, if you can contribute $5,200 to various candidates and still have money left over for a jet ski. You are basically a political pimp and these politicians are your bottom bitches. <laughs> yeah. And look, if you're offended by that terminology and not the robbery of our election process, you're not getting the fucking point. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <clears throat> now, a Princeton study showed that there is a rising correlation between legislation that is passed with the viewpoints of economic elites, right? Basically, what that means is the more that the elites want something to happen, the more likely it will happen. The same thing with these interest groups as well. But when it comes to the viewpoints of the people, there is a flat line, meaning no matter how much consensus there is amongst the people, the likelihood of this legislation passing on our behalf stays the same. And that's done by Princeton, which is, uh, which is a pretty, pretty like little neoliberal school there, right? But this idea right here is where the notion of partisanship comes from, right? The Democrats like to blame the Republicans and vice versa for not getting things done. And the people that have more allegiances to these parties than each other start quibbling about which master is kinder in their oppression. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But the reality is that both parties don't care about the people and only listen to the donor class. This is, this is not just a duopoly. This is a monopoly. This is one snake with two heads. This is proof that we're living in a democracy for fundraising, right? This is proof that we're living in a kleptocracy, which is a fancy word for a stolen democracy, which is a very nice way of saying trash fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And there have even been instances where both parties have been far more blatant about their allegiances to the donors and the delegates. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Our election process in America involves delegates that choose the candidate. Supposedly, they do this based on the people's voices, but really what it does is make the voting system even bigger of a clusterfuck. You know? The delegate process is like this, right? It's like, uh, it's like ordering from the drive through menu, right? You go into the drive through you said you wanted a veggie burger with a chocolate milkshake and a side of fries, but instead what you get is a literal garbage fire. <laughs> <laughs> which is, which is it's a guy i don't know if you know this is very dangerous to have in your car is is just a whole trash can <laughs> on fire not safe you guys unsafe look in, in 1912 republican candidate teddy roosevelt wanted to push back against the corporate direction of the republican party nine out of 13 primary states chose roosevelt but Taft was nominated to the party instead. And that's because Taft went directly to the delegates because he knew that they'd be making the decision anyway. So this eventually led to the creation of the Bull Moose Party, which we'll talk about the, uh, that in a little bit. Right, in 1968, uh, the, Hubert Humphrey was selected as the Democratic nominee uh, after he campaigned in, uh, this is a record number here, zero fucking states. None. He didn't campaign <laughs> in any of them. <laughs> right? And the Democratic Party basically chose Hubert Humphrey to be their candidate of choice. And, uh, and, <laughs> and then basically what happened is that the people realized that their votes didn't matter. Uh, and then there was a fucking riot, you guys. <laughs> there was a fucking riot, right? So this is, this is uh, uh, where did we go from here? Oh, I, I accidentally doubled up on that slide. Okay. In 1968, Hubert Humphrey ended up with the nomination for Democratic, the Democratic nomination for president without running in a single primary. So it's the same thing that happened with Taft, who was president and didn't run in a single, you know, he ran, but, but Roosevelt ended up winning in the popular states and Taft was able to throw his weight around with the other states and get the nomination because he was all establishment. Well, in 1968, it was worse. Hubert Humphrey didn't even run in the primaries. He said, why do I need to run in the primaries? All I got to do is win over the delegates. This created a riot. This was in the Chicago Convention of 1968. <laughs> yeah. So here's what the Democrats did, right? They had to get the faith of the people back. So the Democrats let the populist, uh, oh, the populists, uh, us, we the people, pick the nominee. So in 1972, they chose George McGovern, who was an anti-war left-wing populist. And in response to that, the DNC tanked his campaign against Nixon by running smear campaigns and pushing Democrats for Nixon. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, hey, we got to vote blue no matter who, right? Eesh. Yeah. If you ever needed proof that there was only one party in this country, it's in the reality of fucking Democrats for Nixon. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Kim Iverson. George McGovern, who was an anti war progressive candidate, um, ended up. Uh, getting the nomination by popular vote and the Democratic Party did what we're seeing today with Bernie Sanders. They went on a major media campaign to smear the guy and they did this in 1972 to George McGovern. There was actually a movement of Democrats that came out saying Democrats for Nixon. They wanted Nixon over George McGovern and they actually campaigned on behalf of Nixon. I don't know if you caught that last little pin, but it did say uh, putting country over party. <laughs> 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 Choosing Richard Nixon was putting country over party, according to the Democrats, uh, in uh, in 1972. That's fun. That's a that's a fu that's a fun part of our history. <laughs> Look, this this version of democracy should be left behind. Right? It's controlled, it's manipulated, and it doesn't work for the people it claims to represent. It does work for profit and the donor class. And what we need is something better. 
what we need to do is throw this version of democracy in the trash and light it on fucking fire. <laughs> That's what we need to do. In our car. In our, yeah, no, don't, not in the car. <laughs> no, leave the, take it out of your vehicle. All fire should be taken out of vehicles. Uh, look, we got. If we're gonna have a revolution, there there have to be safety measures involved. I'm I'm gonna be that guy in the revolution. I'm gonna be the guy that's like, hey, that doesn't look safe. Do you want to maybe set it on fire outside the building? That's gonna set off the fire alarms. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be that guy. And that is your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a share. Please give it a thumbs up and share it around. And make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. Uh, this channel often gets suppressed because we don't particularly talk about things that uh, that the algorithm deems is cool. <laughs> so uh, we depend on, uh, uh, or I depend on you guys uh, sharing it out to as many people as you possibly can. Um, there's going to be a bunch of cool stuff coming up on this channel. Uh, videos like this, more scripted history-based socio-political commentary uh, there's rantier videos about uh, current events, news. There, there's more uh, bite-sized videos about uh, specific topics. And there's going to be interviews coming up on this channel as well that I'm excited to share with you guys. So uh, there's going to be a bunch of cool stuff coming up on this channel. Uh, virtually every single day of the week, you can probably find some videos coming up on this channel. So make sure you're subscribed to that. Uh, and like I mentioned at the very top of the show, this was recorded in front of a, a, a live virtual audience. So if you would like to be part of a live virtual audience, you can totally do so by purchasing tickets and, uh, and coming out to, to hang out with us and, and take part in the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows. Uh, they happen on Fridays um, and uh, at 9 p.m. They're only five bucks and we donate half the proceeds to, uh, to a grassroots organization venue journalists etc etc so uh and this video that you're watching right now we donated half the ticket sales to a movement for a people's party uh so if you would like to learn even more about them if you would like to donate to them you can do so at peoplesparty.org the link is in the description below uh and uh, i hope to see you guys at one of these events i hope you guys will go grab your tickets go to krishmohan.com for those tickets it's k-r-i-s-h M-O-H-A-N, become a sustaining make member, make a one-time donation, buy an album, go nuts with watching a bunch of these videos, go crazy about it. Uh, but Krishmohan.com is your one-stop shop for all things Krishmohan. Uh, I hope to see you guys again soon. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll